Winning 2019's championship and dealing with the loss of Kawhi Leonard has led to Masai Ujiri rebuilding the Toronto Raptors on the fly. The GM gods provided Nick Nurse with a young roster, potentially capable of making another miraculous playoff run once fully developed. As you probably know, Toronto has eight players who've got at least a 7'1 wingspan, so evidently the front office has made it a clear-cut number one priority to acquire as many lengthy phenoms as possible and opt to internally develop said player's shooting. Despite some development needing to be made, as of right now, this Toronto team's still a nightmare, and not only because they're grueling to score on, the Raptors' perimeter offense is sneaky dangerous as well. The insane superstar development of Pascal Siakam, along with Gary Trent Jr. and OG Ananobi being stars within their roles, have been massive factors on both ends of the floor for this team early on. All without 2022 All-Star Fred Van Vliet, the Raptors beat the contending caliber Atlanta Hawks by 30 points. While many have written off this roster's talent in the post-Kawhi era, here's why Toronto's being slept on. The Raptors had the second-worst defensive rating among playoff teams last year. They were desperately lacking rim protection and rebounding, departments which Philly dominated them in. That's why in 2022's draft, stealing a quick-footed, NBA-ready drop coverage defender in Christian Coloco was ideal. Using Caleb Martin tackling him and the refs unrightfully ejecting him as extra fuel the mobile versatility on defense provided by this year's 33rd overall pick has been on full display as of late. Standing 7 foot 1 and weighing 225 pounds, it's evident that Coloco's unnatural rebounding, rim protecting, low post working 5 man, Christian's averaging a block per game, 5th among all rookies in that category. Before going further in depth on Coloco, just 8.5% of you watching are subscribed, so please hit the box and turn on notifications so you're updated on NBA analysis like this. Also, please hit the like button to help this video spread, and for channel updates along with Siakam mixtapes like this, follow at Hoops on Instagram. Thank you greatly for your support. Now into the content. Best part about Christian Coloco is the man's movement for his size. Like many switchable Raptor stoppers, most prominently Scotty Barnes, Coloco is also capable of guarding all five positions. He's an utterly rangy defender, as shown off in his help defense and rotations throughout Toronto's first few games. Here, the Rook denies Embiid of his spot on the block, bodies through him to pick off Maxi's pass, and takes it coast to coast for the jam. Secondly, on the back side, after Maxi makes his first step, look how far Coloco is from the paint. There seems to be an open lane to attack, but Coloco just takes a single hop step to close the door. That rim protecting elusiveness is the focal point of the value provided by Coloco, which makes him the perfect fit for a Raptor team which required just that quality. Further showing off that mix of athleticism and reach, Coloco goes through four Cavaliers boxing out and springs up for the monster putback dunk. This play sees Coloco set an elusive weak side on ball screen, catch the Barnes entry pass, and plant his feet inside for the easy dunk. Here, he fakes a stunt off Capella to instead fully rotate over to close the door on DeAndre Hunter for the block. Look how far Coloco's up in drop coverage right here as he sticks with DeJounte Murray's off handed drive, and while blocking the shot, he keeps the play alive, tapping it to Scott. Whether he's high in drop or low in drop, as he is on this next possession, Coloco's rim protection is elite for a first-year player. Speaking of elite qualities for a center, as Collins tries to wrap him up, Coloco shows off his strength to finish this and one. Another elusive slip to the basket in another screen and roll with Scotty sees Coloco catch the dime from Barnes through two defenders and gallop to the hoop past the rotating all-NBA defender DeJounte Murray. In terms of the more reputable player on this team from Douala Cameroon, Pascal Siakam, is currently playing like an MVP candidate. It's amazing that not too long ago you had takes like this being made, stating that Siakam should be traded for Ben Simmons. Absorbing smack talk like that directly on the chin, Peace Skills would go on to have an all-NBA season in 2021-22. Last season saw Siakam prove to doubters for yet another time that he's a legit all-star caliber talent and a borderline superstar at this point. That said, come last spring's playoffs, Pascal's point-per-game averages from the regular season stayed at the same 22.8-per-game mark, and his three-point percentage dipped to 23.1%. So, to be real with you, he wasn't the ideal go-to guy. However, it became clear to the basketball world that Siakam had become much more refined and overall much better during the Rico Hines runs this summer. 
Pascal's evidently in the best condition of his life right now. And here's another thing you can't forget about him. While he's going to turn 29 years old in April, Siakam's no finish product. As utterly special as his repertoires become, which we'll get further into, you can't forget it's only this man's 12th year of playing basketball, given he picked up a ball for the first time at age 16. Pascal said on media day that his goal was to be a top 5 player, and so far, he's living up to expectations. Siakam's newfound confidence shows you how much work this man put in over the summer. His instinctive scoring flow is unstoppable for defenses right now. Pascal's combination of overpowering strength, utterly smooth finesse in traffic, and unseemly dribbling ability for a guy with a 7'4 reach make him one of a kind. I'd almost compare Siakam to the big man version of Kobe Bryant. At this point in his career, Siakam has the mental fortitude and strength that allow him to just put his head down and body off defenders in the lane, even when he's being guarded by one of the best wing defenders in the game right now in PJ Tucker. A separate video entirely could be made about Siakam's improved footwork and follow through in terms of his deep range and off the dribble shooting. This man's in his bag right now, but I wanted to focus on Siakam's growth as a passer. Through seven games as of this recording, Siakam's already dropped a 37-point triple-double against Brooklyn and another double-digit assist showing against Philly. He's gone from averaging 0.3 assists per game as a rookie to now 7.4 assists per game as a seventh-year player. The game we're going to evaluate is Siakam's career-high 13-assist night against Philly. He scored all of his 20 points in the first half before the Sixers adjusted their game plan and he created for his teammates. This transition opportunity sees Pascal catch the pass from Trent and despite going 100 miles per hour, swiftly stop on a dime and drop a smooth floater pass to the streaking Banton. Here, OG Ananobi's wherewithal blitzes the passing lane and Siakam's pace pushing draws the attention of four Philly defenders before he weaves a bullet pass to the right wing for the sniping GTJ. Whether it's baiting attacks before dumping it off on fast breaks or drawing gravity and finding cutters in the half court, Pascal responding to defensive game plans which adjust midway through the game is a great sign for the Raptors. On the topic of great signs for this Raptor team, Toronto could easily be 6-1 right now. I haven't mentioned the Raptors have been without Otto Porter Jr. for every game and crucial two-way stretch big Chris Boucher for three games. Chris Boucher's motor and positionless defense were greatly missed. The Canadians, one of, if not Toronto's most important role player, Boucher's come a long way since his days at the end of the bench, and it's well-deserved. A massive contributor to the Raps looking solid in the very early going is Gary Trent Jr. seeming to have developed into this team's number two option. We can never forget how Masai Ujiri absolutely robbed Portland in that trade for GTJ, which we can say officially now that Norman Powell isn't a blazer anymore. We're talking about a player in Gary Trent who scored 30-plus points in five straight games last season, the Raptors franchise record, the soon-to-be just 24-year-old has a lightning-quick trigger that make him a sniper who can hit the target under any circumstance. This game-winning dagger right in the grill of Max Struess, an incredibly difficult look, displays how much of an assassin this man is. It's incredible that Portland gave him up so easily at 2021's trade deadline because Gary's maturing on and off the court. After posting 27 points on 5 for 10 shooting from deep, Trent Jr. expressed supreme confidence in this Raptor team, saying, quote, We put our five against anybody's five. We should be good. The Raptors' starting five being so damn good has a lot to do with the reliability of Steady Freddy. We'll get to his hustle, but aside from that, the best aspect of Fred Van Vliet's game is his basketball IQ. The guy's one of the smartest players in the league. Fred's IQ shows up in his ability to manage the rhythm of Toronto's offense, being capable of either coming off pin downs, working off the ball, or manufacturing looks with his shiftiness with the ball. Fred currently leads the Raptors in assists as he continues the quest to follow in the footsteps of legendary Raptor point guard Kyle Lowry. Just like the legend K-Low, Fred Van Vliet along with Pascal Siakam were supporting cast members to Kawhi Leonard during the title run. But Van Vliet and Siakam's development plus championship experience have helped the two morph into much more focal weapons throughout the years. Nevertheless, Toronto still having several champions left over from 2019 is something many forget. Another champion, OG Ananobi, 
has always been a clutch player throughout his time with the Raptors. That's kept up in 2022-23, as he ranks number two on the Raptors only behind Trent Jr. in fourth quarter scoring. Ananobi accepting the role as Toronto's 3 and D guy is a scary sight for the rest of the league. Because OG is obviously capable of stepping up into that number one scoring role when Siakam's out, but when he's content to spot up on the wing and move so well off the ball like he does with backdoor cuts, that makes him such a luxury considering what he does defensively. OG is one of the best wing stoppers and combo forwards in the association and it's becoming more and more evident by the game. Unexperienced Ananobi is terrifying as the product of Indiana is underappreciated. You only hope that in the later half of his 20s, the consistency shooting the basketball will come along for him. But OG makes up for any inconsistencies with his rebounding and defense, areas which go unnoticed by casuals. Ananobi seems to be using the Raptors being number 15 in defense last playoffs as motivation, as his gained experience mostly shows up on that end of the court. This year, OG's averaging 2.6 steals and a block per game, and in the blowout W against Atlanta, he racked up a vicious 5 steals. Another reason for the Raptors starting 5 being elite has to do with a more efficient sophomore Scotty Barnes, who in year 2 has increased his percentages from both the field and from deep, all while fighting through an ankle sprain. Scotty's evidently an even better defender in terms of his IQ to make sound rotations and clamp up on the ball like he showed off against Trey Young. Offensively, he's nicely working within the flow of this Raptor offense. Scotty dropped 21 points and a career high 5 triples. Three of those came in the first quarter alone, essentially on three consecutive possessions, as Barnes showed off the reps he put in, polishing that jumper on and off the bounce over the summer. Meanwhile, one of the most overlooked rising talents in the association, Precious Achua, made headlines by racking up 22 rebounds against Miami, the fourth highest single game total in franchise history. If Achua can improve defensively and with his touchdown low, we're looking at one of the most intriguing big men in all of basketball. Don't forget how good of a stretch big Precious was last year for Toronto, like Gary Trent Jr. I have no idea how Masai landed Achua in a trade. Masai promoting Nick Nurse from assistant to head coach in 2018 summer in retrospect looks like an incredible deal for this Toronto franchise. Nurse is a game planning mastermind who any team would be willing to drop about anything to acquire. When the Lakers expressed interest in Nick Nurse last May, Masai Ujiri responded to that rumor by saying, I want Messi, I want Ronaldo, I want Kobe, so they can keep dreaming, I dream too, end quote. Those aforementioned names may seem like insane company, but that's how special of a coach that Nick Nurse is, which has proven to be the case on the biggest stage. The depth at point guard which Nurse will have to work with behind Van Vliet consists of Delano Banton and Malachi Flynn. The hometown kid Delano Banton is a wiry 6'7 combo guard whose sophomore season has seen him crack the Raptor rotation. Delano's reach defensively and ability to find seams in the defense offensively, mostly in transition, has proved to have an impact. Malachi Flynn's a bit of a question mark because of his lack of defense, but offensively, his decision making and quick twitch shooting can have its value at times. You could argue Jeff Dowden or Ron Harper Jr. deserve some run as the backup PG, but Dowden and Harper Jr. are nonetheless solid third and fourth string guards to have in your back pocket. Last but not least, the Raptors' veteran leadership gives the young core of this team a calming presence. Kem Birch, Thaddeus Young, Otto Porter Jr., and Wancho Hernan Gomez have each been in the league for at least six years, with Thad Young having as many as 16 seasons under his belt. Overall, the Raptors' clamping, lengthy, utterly desperate, and well game planned defensive fortitude makes them capable of winning on any given night. But out of anyone, which player are you most excited about on the Raptors? Two shoutouts from my last upload and this one next time. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.